Welcome back controllers, this is Tyler with Flying Development Studio and you're watching episode 3 of our Approach Control tutorial series where we're talking about the ILS approach, the intercept, and we're also going to touch on radar patterns. So as we get into this we're going to be at Birmingham in the London region where we're going to be working a 737 doing a radar pattern to an ILS approach. Now your radar pattern is just like a tower pattern in the sense that you have a crosswind, downwind, base, and final. But in between that base and final, you're also going to have an intercept, which we're going to touch on later. So the first vector we're going to give is the crosswind turn. Now a lot of times with tower we think of a crosswind where it's just a 90 degree turn, but for approach, I like to give more than 90 degrees because it pushes you away from the airport for the downwind, but it also gets them flying towards the approach end so you can expedite that pattern. You can see here that also with the first term we need to assign an altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and give them 4,000 feet which is a pretty standard radar pattern altitude. A lot of times it may be necessary to just give them 3,000, 4,000. It's really depending on traffic, terrain, etc. And if you watch the previous episodes, we talked about how to figure out what your terrain height is. So here, 4,000 safe. And also keep in mind that there's a difference between knots indicated airspeed and your ground speed. So the higher they are, the faster ground speed they can get. So we're moving on to the downwind turn. Now, if he's going to be landing on runway 33, well, the opposite of 33 is 15, so that makes it really easy to figure out what your downwind needs to be. The opposite of 33 is 15, so we're going to turn him right heading 150, which will put him on a perfect downwind. Now, as he approaches base, I'm going to go ahead and tell the 737 to slow down, and I'm going to tell him to maintain at or below 210 knots. Now, the reason this is important is because the faster an aircraft is flying, or the bigger the aircraft, the wider the turn. So I want them to slow down a little bit so I can ensure that the turn is a little more precise and exactly where I want them. As our 737 slows down, we can now start to focus on the base turn. The base turn is exactly like it would be for a tower pattern. You're just making that 90 degree turn prior to final. So as we issue our vector for base, we're also going to give a descent to 3000. We start descending early because you want the aircraft to intercept the localizer below the glide slope. So in this case, I'm preparing to have them intercept at 2500. Now here's the biggest thing with an ILS approach, the intercept. An intercept can be no more than 30 degrees. So you might be wondering, okay, well, what does that mean? This means that you have three different headings available on each side of the runway heading. So 300 through 320 or 340 through 360. Now again, the purpose is to intercept the localizer, so that means no straight ends are allowed. So if our runway heading is 33, you cannot vector the aircraft to 330, and this is why. As the aircraft approaches the runway center line, and we can see the needle here is coming towards the center, the aircraft is actually going to start turning inbound on their own until the needle is perfectly centered with the localizer. So this is great for those no visibility situations like we have here where they can fly the instrument approach all the way to the runway. So as we continue with this, we're going to go ahead and hit clear for approach and we're going to press 2500 and that's going to give the 737 their approach clearance. So that's going to turn them right to 300 descend and maintain 2,500 so that they're below the glide slope, and it's also going to clear them for the ILS runway 33 approach. Now as we watch this play out, we'll see the 737 is going to be at a perfect intercept so that he can start to turn inbound on his own. Now the best time to give a frequency change to the Unicom or the active tower that's available is once you see that the aircraft is starting to turn inbound and they've actually had a good intercept. Right here we're looking out and we see the 737 is approaching that center line for runway 33 and he's at a good angle and here is where he's going to start turning inbound on his own. So remember, once you've given that clearance, it's okay that the aircraft is going to turn on their own because that's what they're supposed to do as part of the approach. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the YouTube channel or visit community.infiniteflight.com. Again, this is Tyler with Flying Development Studio, and we'll see you next time.